this is shit that goes on. But this is a little fruit pile. This is a fruit pile. It's a fruit pile. Break me down to build me up again. They like, ho, we need you back so we could kill you ass again. You know, it's like this thing, this love. Hip hop fans are no strangers to musician rivalries, often fueling rumors and speculation as every move is closely watched. Recently, growing tensions between two music industry legends, Jay Z and 50 Cent, have captured the spotlight. I'm gonna let you tell it. No, you're, you're no the best. I want you to tell it. You really are the best. You're proving it here today. <laughs> as much as I'm proving it, you're proving it. You're proving it. Um, yeah, that wasn't the thing. It wasn't. People say that. He lost $50 million. No, no, that's not even close to what happened to this dude. And until you understand what happened to the dude, you don't understand what happened. Like, no, not they offered him $50 million and he turned it down. Who gonna turn down $50 million? Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to body. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say yeah, I'm I so can, freely. Can, can, I need, can I need another one? You, here, get you another Thank one. Thank you, too, sir. Can. Thank you. It all started when 50 Cent took a serious jab at Jay-Z during a recent interview. While reflecting on his own rise to fame and the importance of connections in the industry, 50 Cent boldly claimed that Jay Z's success was largely due to his relationship with Beyonce. According to him, once Jay Z and Beyonce began dating, they started racking up awards, and even their children seemed to win Grammys without being directly involved in music. Come in, right? You're saying that she knew someone that went through Jimmy Hitchman proffer agreement for a drug case. In the proffer agreement revealed that Jimmy Hitchman, he could have walked away if he would have given up, did he? What she mean by that? Well, what happened was is that they had nine different sections with Jimmy Hitchman regarding his, his proffer agreement. So that means the feds went in there nine different times to talk to him. And in those, in those sessions, they asked him what do you know about Sean Puffy Combs or Sean Diddy Combs? I don't think it was Puffy at that time. It wasn't Diddy at the time. But what do you know about Sean John Puffy Combs having sex with underage boy? And you got to realize, and, and people never think, think about this, that Jimmy and his brother... I think they had the same charges. But his brother walked away from that and Jimmy gets life without the possibility of parole, I think. Which is crazy. For any drug charge. Nobody should spend their life in jail for drug charges. And just drug charges. But I think he, they tried to tie him to some murders or something like that. I don't I don't know. I don't know that to be for sure. But he shouldn't spend his life in, in, in jail for no drug charges. Not at all. So but they was going to let him walk. If he would probably had to uh, put that proper agreement, they probably would let him walk. If he had any information regarding Puff having sex with underage boys that the feds asked him in 2011 in 2011 brother so what did the feds know because the feds not coming there unless somebody made a report or somebody made some allegations against Puff in 2011 to ask a friend of him his Jimmy Hitchman, what do you know about that? But for them to ask him about that, it had to be more than a rumor. Somebody made a complaint somewhere. And it got, the feds got hold to that complaint. Now they're going to investigate that complaint when they get people under the barrel like they had Jimmy Hinch that's why they asked him 
if he did know information, right? Why do you think he didn't tell? Then they would ask, how do you know? And then it comes into play, whereas that if you know of anybody that's in the danger in the welfare of a child, and you see that, and you don't report it, you're just as guilty as the person who does it. While some might dismiss 50 Cent's remarks as mere trolling, there seems to be deeper tension between the two artists despite Jay-Z's immense success and wealth. 50 Cent has a history of poking fun at him, even recalling a backstage moment at the American Music Awards where Jay-Z made a light-hearted joke at his expense. Fans of 50 Cent have speculated about the real reasons behind these relentless jabs, debating whether there's more beneath the surface than just playful digs. Um, first and foremost, um, I just want to say, I know a lot of people want to hear these stories and everything like that, because this is stuff that happened back in the day. And then maybe that if they knew there was going to ever be a YouTube or they knew there was going to ever be social media, uh, a lot of the stuff probably wouldn't have got played out like it did. But things happen and, and these are just stories from the past. I would like to use that as, uh, what you call that? Um, just just to just to clear the facts up what's going on but it all started we was in atlanta and this story starts when i'm with puff and he's in the exotic bookstores and he's doing shopping right he's shopping getting his stuff and everything like that so you know this is the first time i was ever in the exotic bookstore with puff so you know i'm giving him his space he's taking things off the shelves and stuff like that, because they gave him a brown paper bag. When they gave him a brown paper bag, he was just putting stuff in there. So I said, damn, you know, he got to go put it on the counter and, you know, show everybody what he's getting. So as he going, I'm just looking at the places where he's picking stuff from. So there's one part he <laughs> he picked up uh, some things from up here on my left side. And then he, he picked like a quite a few of them down. I'm like, yeah, okay. He put them in the bag. So when I went by there and I looked up there, I, and it said butt plugs. And I was like, hey yo. <laughs> I was I was messing with him. Because people don't understand, you know, we was we we was like friends. He was a part of the same gang. So I'm still gonna tease him. I'm still gonna mess with him and everything like that. I could do that. It wasn't just no security thing. So I say, yo. What are you getting this for? <laughs> and it said butt plugs. And he was like, yo, yo, can I do my shopping by myself? I said, yeah, you can do it by yourself, brother. And he started walking and everything like that. So when he got to, I just waited at the counter. So when he got to the counter, he didn't even have to show the guy nothing. He just gave the guy a wad of money. I mean, I mean, like, he gave a, the guy a stack something like this. And Puff wasn't a dude that carried no 20s and no 50s or nothing like that. And I mean, like, he just said, boom. And we walked out the store. So we had to leave Atlanta and go to uh, North Carolina for a show. You understand? And um, it was him, this rapper, Sarah, and this other girl. We all got on a G5. A G, G Jay-Z's fell out with former partner Dame Dash remains one of his biggest controversies raising questions about his loyalty. Though his rise to success is impressive, his readiness to sacrifice relationships for it highlights the cutthroat nature of the industry. We got on a, G, a G, G5 jet and we flew to, uh, G4 jet, and we flew to uh, uh, North Carolina. So, uh, later on that, I think that afternoon, same day, um, this rapper and him, they all in the room together. You know, it's Sarah, the girl, Puff, and, and this dude, this rapper. So uh, I'm here at the door and stuff like that. Like, yeah, so then next thing you know, somebody rang the doorbell. We had the presidential suite where we was at. So I opened the door and uh, the dude said, yo, I'm here for my cousin. I said, who your cousin? And he said, uh, Ja Rule. I said, well, he busy right now. He said, oh, 
He busy doing what? I said, he with Puff, they're in the room, they busy, they don't want to be bothered. He said, well, I'm going in there. I said, bro, you ain't going in there because he told me they don't want nobody to be bothering them. And he was like, yo, I don't care, man. I'm going in there. That, that bull like that. I said, yo, bro, Jesus Christ, I had to come down here and take the air out of my body before you get in that room right there. Watch, watch. He tried to bum rush me. I grabbed his and threw him against the piano. When I threw him into the piano, Puff and Ja Rule runs out the room. Puff got his towel, Ja grabbing his towel, but they butt the naked. And so then uh, Ja was like, yo, what's going on? Yo, Gene, that's my cousin. He know me well. You know, uh, and Puff was like, yo, Gene, what happened? I said, he tried to get in the room. I told him he couldn't get in the room. And he was like, he just looked, Puff looked at Ja. He said, yo, Ja said, you ain't want to go in that room because there's a lot of freaking going on. <laughs> so I was like, oh, he said it was a lot of freaky going on. So that was basically that story, man. You know what I'm saying? They went back in the room. Dude felt a certain kind of way and he left out. So we, I seen them at the concert the next day and they tried to, you know, form up against me. But my man Frank was like, I told my man Frank, I was like, yo, Frank, put yourself in that position. Somebody trying to get in the room. And Ja told you don't let nobody get in the room. What would you do? Now, y'all can do whatever y'all want to do, man. But you know I ain't taking no losses. He said, yo, you good, you good. And that was it. Bro, when, when Ja said, you don't want to come up in there. A lot of freaky stuff is going on. You got to use your mind. What they was doing with those butt plugs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that wild. was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was real wild. <laughs> In addition to his conflict with 50 Cent, Jay-Z has faced criticism for his partnerships with controversial figures like R. Kelly. Some have accused him of compromising integrity for personal gain. However, Jay-Z's fans argue that his success stems from his business acumen and strategic decisions, rather than mere luck or convenience. Did you ever do anything with Tupac or no? Did you ever? No, I saw him right before he passed too. Yeah, that's crazy. Never work with him, though. What did Tupac do? He did gang-related, poetic justice. Mm -hmm. He did Jews. Mm -hmm. And he did a couple other things. He did a basketball It's up with Jim Belushi. Remember, he did the one thing. Yeah, with yeah, cop, yeah. He, what, what did he do? Can you, oh, above the Ram, mm -hmm. poetic justice with uh, uh, Janet Jackson, which I thought it was yeah. great. Yeah. Bullet, uh, Bullet, I think. Is oh, what yeah. Gang-related gang, gang related, uh, album soundtrack was actually good. I don't know yeah. if you've listened to the gang-related soundtrack. Was that Not in a minute. Really, Not in a minute. Yeah, it was a really, really good soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, Cuba, with, with all this stuff that's coming up with uh, Diddy and, and you're, you're on one end, you know, 50 Cent is calling out Diddy and here's yeah. what he's doing and all this stuff. And they got the back and forth. Yeah. I got sugar on here. Look at this example. Look what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And I got sugar on. Yeah, exactly. No, no question about it. What do you think is going on with all the stuff with Diddy, with Little Rod, with, you know, all the stories that everybody's hearing about? You mean in terms of what? I mean, you know, being raiding his, you know, his house being raided. I mean, that's crazy. That's the craziest thing I'd ever. And then, they, <laughs> hey, how about me? I wake up in the morning, I turn it to say, Sean, Hector, Cuba Gooding Jr. I was like, hey, excuse me, pull me into this. Um, I think, I think whatever he's dealing with, he's, he's on his journey, man. I think that God has got him on a path where I, I can't imagine that he's stupid enough to do whatever he's doing and keep it on his premises. I think that the raid and all of that stuff, only time will tell who was involved, who had been a frequent guest in, in these places and areas. It's funny because my lawyers said, you know, every outlet in the world wants to talk to you. And again, I'm like, I'm not defining myself from some headline in the press. So I stayed quiet. And it's so funny. So I'll tell you a little story about who my girlfriend is. She gave Robert De Niro three grandkids. Her name is Claudine De Niro. She married his son, Raphael. They separated and we've been together for a while. But she, at one point, ran um, a Naomi Camel's publicity. She at one point ran um, P. Diddy's publicity, right when he started doing the white party thing. Mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. had just gotten uh, freed from uh, indictment, found not guilty 
did he, did he, did he, did he, did he? And she, he said to her, I'm going to die running with these niggas, man. I need you to help me with the white folks and the switch. And so she changed, helped change, cultivate his new image. So they had a friendship for years. But I had never met him till probably 2019, 20. Just casually, Claudine and I, he invited us to his house. The pandemic was starting. To Fans are left questioning what the future holds for these two music giants. As the conflict between 50 Cent and Jay-Z intensifies, it seems tensions are fueled by a mix of personal animosity and professional rivalry. And hadn't seen him since that night where this guy with this this picture that says that I had my sh shoulder on him and all this stuff, made it, making it look sordid. Well, that picture, everyone in the room, there's probably 300 of us on the deck of P, P. Diddy's, I'm going to show you, on P. Diddy's boat, New Year's Eve, I went from one ship, Happy New Year, so I hung out with Tyson, mm -hmm. and next ship, there's Drake, this ship had P. Diddy, he had his guy, his videographer, they're listening mm -hmm. to music, mm -hmm. and he says, hey Cube, listen, to, you want to hear P. Diddy's new song? I said, yeah, sure, sit down next to him, they didn't use this angle, which is which to me makes makes me laugh, because I go, oh, I get it, you used... You made it look the way you wanted it to look. But that, and if you hold it, you know how you hold it and it does the thing where, it, can you hear all the people? If you tap it or something, it's a live picture. Does, do you see what I mean? It's like, here we are just listening to the music. Finished, took the thing off, said whatever I said to him, left. That was it. But this guy who's suing him, going after the money, man. I, I'm sure. And by the way, I don't know Pity Diddy's life. I don't know what he's going through. I don't know what the police are going to find on, on all of that. Were you guys close? Were you guys friends? or would We were acquaintances, just like I just yeah. showed you. Yeah. Two, three times I've seen him. So it's Oh, so Diddy, you've only seen him two or three times. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So why would they include you all of a sudden in some way? I think because of the darkness of the other grab, grab, grab of the cases that I already had went through. Right. A lot of that stuff is 18, though, 19, right? Those are from five, six years ago, That's the right. cases. That's yeah. Right. And and that was kind of, was that at the peak of the Me Too movement, or was that yeah. pre-Me Too movement? That's, oh, that's, that's, that's right. Is Me that's Too right movement, when it right? kicked off, yeah. Right. That was crazy. Yeah. So it's, look, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with uh, Diddy. Oh, 100%. Yeah. The, 100%. The, but I did not know that you guys only hung out two or three times. That's it, man. And 50 was with you for your birth, for your 56th birthday. I think you guys were hanging out together but now, in Miami. Yeah, because we were in St. Bart's on that boat. But then in Miami, which is where I, I, I run around now, yeah. Was, yeah, of course, I ran into 50 and he was d uh, promoting his champagne. I've seen Drake a hundred times around town. He's, he, he loves Miami. Yeah. Yeah. 50? I'm big with the rappers. How do, you, how do you feel about 50? What's, uh, how's 50 like? I, you know, it's so funny. I got a call from 50 who reached out to me and said, we got to uplift our black entertainers and let's work together. I said, great. So we'll see, you know. I, I try not to voice any of my opinion when it comes to the rap songs because... I, just like everybody else, I'm into that music, man. Are you, you know in, are I mean? you following the Lamar I, and Drake thing? No, I just okay. heard about yeah, that. Yeah, you got it. I mean, that's, that's like crazy. a whole... Somebody just got shot today outside of Drake's house. I Did heard. You see that? I heard. So, I mean, it's like drive-by shooting in a gated community. I mean, that sounds a little crazy. Yeah, Drake's security guard seriously injured and in shooting at Toronto's yeah. mansion. Guard was shot inside Drake's home and had... Fans are especially intrigued by 50 Cent's relentless attacks on Jay-Z's credibility and moral character from questioning the legitimacy of his awards to accusing him of abandoning former partners. While some see 50 Cent's criticism as mere provocation, others believe it highlights deeper issues within the industry. Regardless, 50 Cent has not held back in his criticism of the rapper. But non-life-threatening yeah. injuries while the assailant uh, fled in a vehicle. Yeah, I, I say to them, just like I said to Tupac when I saw him in the lobby of that hotel in Chicago, he said, hey, man, help me, man, give me some advice. I said, hey, man, just remember your artistry first. I know you're getting caught up with all this madness, but you're an artist now. He said, thanks, Cube. He hugged me and he went off. And How old was he at the time? Well, two, three weeks later, he was gone. Oh, no shit. I saw him, and here's the second time I saw Tupac. This wow. is a true story. Now, I don't like the whole the conspiracy thing. But that day, he was in a convertible like Rolls Royce, he was at the stop site, and I was uh, on a hockey tournament, so I was in Vegas as well,
playing hockey, and uh, the, the Tyson had his fight. And I jumped out of the car, and I ran up to his car. Pac! Pac! It's Cube! And all three cars, all these cars, boom, 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 with the guns. Get out go, of no, 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 that's Cube good, man. Hey, that's Cube good. And I go, oh, sorry, sorry, man. He goes, you good? I go, I'm good, I'm good. I'm sorry, guys. Got to get in the car. So that happens that day when the sun's out, and at night, they get shot, and get there's no cops here. around. That's a true story. I was involved wow. in that. So in the morning, a few hours later, he's gone. Yeah. Yes. And so where were all of those undercover cops that pulled the guns on me when I tried to approach him sitting in his car convertible? What are you saying? I'm just saying it's weird that they were going to blow me away, and I'm Academy Award winner. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, because that's 96. So yeah. And 96, you're like everywhere. I'm the man. Yeah, you're the man They're in like, We don't care. Get away. Back up. That's crazy. Yeah. By the way, what do you pay you for, Jerry Maguire? I forgot to ask you earlier. Was it? What, uh, was that your big payday? Hundred, no. Yeah, at that point, 600 grand. What's maybe? the biggest you made for a movie? Oh, Snow Dogs. You know, I should never. I can't talk hell about Snow Dogs. Oh, that was a good year. <laughs> well, that's a one-two hit, baby. Thirteen million total <laughs> oh, that year. Wow. I made a lot Get of money. Get out of here. Yeah. Good oh, for yeah. you. You know that money's gone. Good. Is you it? know, I already spent that money. Really? <laughs> yeah, thirteen million dollars. I understand. Yeah. I was, I'm, I'm assuming you made some good investments. I made some investments. Yeah, but yeah, that that money. Hey, Oof. final. So, if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, this feud highlights a clash of egos and ambitions. While both 50 Cent and Jay-Z have achieved success, their approaches differ greatly, raising questions about the nature of success in the music industry. Jay-Z is known for his strategic partnerships, while 50 Cent thrives on a confrontational persona. This ongoing criticism from 50 Cent prompts deeper reflection on Jay-Z's legacy. Was his success genuinely earned, or simply a result of leveraging connections and influence? I was checking out one of your lives, right? And you made a comment and you said that you'd rather be poor than be Diddy Rich. Can you elaborate on that? Bruh, I told this to this one guy the other day. I'd rather have a slow nickel than a fast dollar any day. My slow nickel put bread on my table. My slow nickel pays my mortgage. My slow nickel brings me home to my family. My slow nickel builds a community. We see what the fast dollar does. Being Diddy Rich takes a guy that once name was Puffy that after every tragedy he had in his life, he had to change his name. Puffy, Puff Daddy, Diddy, Brother Love, Love. Puffy from the DC tragedy went to when those kids was trampled over. I think one or two kids died at a function in DC that he gave. Puffy. City College. Puff Daddy. Diddy. I mean, uh, Biggie. He comes named to Diddy. And now the allegations with Cassie and everything, he went from brother love to love. Being Diddy Rich have you thinking you something that you're not. That you greater than what you supposed to be and the people around you. When I say I'd rather be my poor with my peace of mind, with my own thoughts, my own community, my own love, with my family, then it'd be so rich that I'm thinking I'm something that I'm not. That's what they do, bro. Look how many times. <laughs> Who was that? You ever go to a club? It's a big shootout, and it was it was the mirage, and then you come back a two weeks later. Now it's the zone. <laughs> they change their name after every shootout. <laughs> That's what happens. 
Despite Jay-Z's commercial success, 50 Cent's ongoing criticism might stem from his own anxieties within the industry. By targeting Jay-Z, he may be addressing his frustrations, having often been overshadowed by artists with broader appeal and cultural significance. Regardless of the motivations behind their rivalry, the conflict between 50 Cent and Jay-Z continues to captivate fans worldwide, with 50 Cent possibly seeking to solidify his position in the hip-hop hierarchy and boost his own profile. And right. Because of... Uh, look, Jay-Z and them was putting it together. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they still harbor some energy towards me. You think you were purposely left out of the ad? No, no. I, oh, okay. I don't think... I think that they... They, they were saying the NFL has some issues with me mm. that um, I don't know what those issues are. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, what is the issue? You see what I'm saying? Like, and I... Um, with with him, because like with Nori, Nori was... He had uh, communication. He said, yeah, so I talked to the big homie. He said, told Jay, he was telling me, you know, the white boy wouldn't do the truth without, without 50. I, I hit the homie. The big homie, Jay-Z, right? And I told him to come pull up on me. Mm. And he pulled up on me. And he said... Right? And I'm like... That's when I start saying crazy stuff, because I look and I go, oh, uh, that's your big homie. Right? And so so you, you, you image yourself after a gay painter. Your okay. big homie want to look like a, a gay painter. What are we talking about here? We're talking about Basquiat. He wants to look like a gay painter. Oh, my God. I think I know where we're going with so this. So, now, look, what I'm saying to you is, look, when you start looking at... It's, it, that's not mine. That's theirs. They Harper, right? But when you look at... M is looking at the entire legacy. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing, like, with, with M, Dre, and myself. Like the In the history of hip-hop, the feud between 50 Cent and Jay-Z has evolved from social media spats to public confrontations. With evos to bruise and reputations to defend, there's no sign of this conflict slowing down. Only time will reveal how this saga unfolds. So Jay-Z recently said something crazy about no one, he said nobody's scared of 50 Cent. I think he would have done that if that was 50 Cent. No one's scared of 50 Cent. I want everyone to be clear, no one's scared of 50 Cent. <laughs> I think it was kind of taken out of context a little bit, but what do you think about it? I don't think it was taken out of context. No, I think the guy who was talking to him made him feel like a punk. You see what I'm saying? So he had to say, yo, nobody first scared of 50. Let's get this clear. Nobody is scared of 50. You know, but I'm not the issue. Him making you feel like a punk is the issue. And at the end of the day, I look at it and people don't assess themselves. Even really intelligent people. Jay's a smart guy. You know what I'm saying? He'll analyze other people and other things that they're doing and not actually look at what's happening to him and his transition and difference. But his actual right now he's in a real safe space. He created this real safe aura. This is why people walking on the stage and why shit is happening like that. A lot of it it wouldn't have been like that if he actually dealt with his issues himself. See, he he's 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 an idiot. When Cam Cam Alicia is supposed to be doing a song again at the AMAs, but they're gonna have like twenty security members on the stage making sure nobody bum rushes everyone wasn't to, they just felt you gotta feel comfortable enough to do that like see don't, don't get fucked I will, I'll fuck up you do some shit like that and I'll fuck up let me just go on record with that shit cause I ain't really with all that dumb shit I think everybody already know that and they know like they already know but she wouldn't have walked up there no matter how hot your record is she'd enjoyed that shit from the seat like everybody else like yo yeah yeah, you wouldn't have walked up there. You know fucking better. Like, it's not that comfortable when I'm around. You know I'm coming with something that can make the response right away if they do something crazy. Right? How you going to be doing what I'm doing and be comfortable if you ain't got no response? Regardless of the outcome, one thing is certain. The hip-hop industry will be forever changed. Will Jay-Z and 50 Cent reconcile? Or will their rivalry escalate until one emerges victorious? At the end of the day, to me, two part number one. I don't care what nobody say. Nobody did what that man did. That man had more albums in depth than most people had living. So at the end of the day, that man had a transitional time of coming out a revolutionary rapper, turning into a movie star, a certified movie star, then coming back and dropping me against the world, 
and then coming back and dropping the double album. Man, come on, man. Go on. Half the people y'all say number one took songs from him to make them popular after he was gone. So at the end of the day, look, man. Look, man. When half your raps were another man raps, then, hey, man, it's great that you could take it and use it. But at the same time, it's like you got to look at Biggie Pop and all that as the top five because they set the standards. You got two dead superstars that you can sit back and listen to their music, look at what they doing, how they doing it to formulate your own. They didn't have nobody to look at. They were the original copies. So right now, I'm looking at it like, yeah, you know, New York is built on who can rap the best. Okay. Well, if Big would have lived, would Jay still be the best? See? 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 That's what I'm saying. Now, you can look at any of the podcasts from New York and they'll say, hey, bro, Big, hands down. they say, first of all, tell me what Jay-Z album was better than Life After Death. None. None. Okay. Okay, tell me a Jay-Z album that was better than Goddamn When Pac Came Home. All eyes on me. Me Against the World was a classic. Two. <laughs> and could stand up against a lot of albums. Two. When he went to jail. And when he went to jail, that's when he dropped Me Against the World and was killing the streets. So, I'm like, bro, I was there. I lived through that shit. And you had to have a lot of things happen for you. And a lot of people had to get on your team to push you up here. When these guys made that kind of noise without them people being like that. Like, I can't take... And this is what I'm saying. I'm like, I cannot take that man genius away from him. He is one of the best technical and baddest rappers from New York that has ever come from New York? True. But that's by New York standards. You know what I mean? <laughs> Out here on the West Coast, they love Easy e and Q. In Texas, they love the face. The ghetto boys. In the South, they love who they love. My thing with hip-hop is just stop all this who the best? It ain't nobody the best. You just the best in your read. Regardless of the outcome, one thing is certain. The hip-hop industry will be forever changed. Will Jay-Z and 50 Cent reconcile, or will their rivalry escalate until one emerges victorious? I was checking out one of your lives, right? And you made a comment and you said that you'd rather be poor than be Diddy Rich. Can you elaborate on that? Bruh, I told this to this one guy the other day. I'd rather have a slow nickel than a fast dollar any day. My slow nickel put bread on my table. My slow nickel pays my mortgage. My slow nickel brings me home to my family. My slow nickel builds a community. We see what the fast dollar does. Being Diddy Rich takes a guy that once name was Puffy that after every tragedy he had in his life he had to change his name Puffy Puff Daddy Diddy Brother Love Love Puffy from the DC tragedy went to when those kids was trampled over I think one or two kids died at a function in D.C. that he gave. Puffy. City College. Puff Daddy. Diddy. I mean, uh, Biggie. He comes named to Diddy. And now... The allegations with Cassie and everything. He went from brother love to love. Being Diddy Rich 
have you thinking you something that you're not. Then you greater than what you supposed to be and the people around you. When I say I'd rather be my poor with my peace of mind, with my own thoughts, my own community, my own love, with my family, then it'd be so rich that I'm thinking I'm something that I'm not. That's what they do, bro. Look how many times, <laughs> who was that? You ever go to a club, it's a big shootout, and it was, it was the mirage, and then you come back two weeks later, now it's the zone. <laughs> they changed their name after every shootout. 